I have this clip from uh, Zizek talking. He's talking about here commodity fetishism in a way that I think is really relevant to the overcoat. Okay. Want to play it? Yeah. You have to put headphones on if you're going to listen to it, though. Yes, sir. Pretty entertaining. Okay. How do yeah. I... I'm sorry, Shervin. What do you mean by what is open and what isn't? Like, open to walk up to, or what's open during COVID? What's open and what isn't? Uh, I mean, I think being able to say in a representative democracy, being able to not only uh, being able to contact your elected officials. Oh, that's what you're talking about? Oh, yeah, well, the Senate's, uh, the Senate's open. open. They like don't have any in-person sessions. Openness. Yeah. They don't have, yeah, they don't have sessions right now, but, well, they do. They have, um, like, Zoom sessions, basically. Um, they're adjourning on, like, the 18th of December. Oh, I'm sorry, but holidays. if people can check into work to cook and drive and deliver, why can Congress not check in? Because they're important. Yeah, I know they're important. That's why they have the best health care in the world. And that's exactly why they should check in. Yeah. You know what it is? All those people in Congress are old as fuck, so. Yep. I'm really scared, I guess. Okay, I'll turn it on. All right. Yeah, it's just that it, it echoes through your, through your sound. It's already Marx who long ago emphasized that a commodity is never just a simple object that we buy and consume. A commodity is an object full of theological, even metaphysical niceties. Its presence always reflects an invisible transcendence. And the classical publicity for Coke quite openly refers to this absent, invisible quality. Coke is the real thing, or Coke, that's it. What is that it, the real thing? It's not just another positive property of Coke, something that can be described or uh, pinpointed through chemical analysis. Is that mysterious something more? <laughs> the undescribable excess, which is the object cause of my desire. In our postmodern, however we call them, societies, we are obliged to enjoy. Enjoyment becomes a kind of a weird, perverted duty. The paradox of Coke is that you are thirsty, you drink it. But everyone knows the more you drink it, the more thirsty you get. A desire is never simply the desire for a certain Think. It's always also a desire for desire itself, a desire to continue to desire. Perhaps the ultimate horror of a desire is to be fully built in met, so that I desire no longer. The ultimate melancholic experience is the experience of a loss of desire itself. It's not that some return to an, a previous era of natural uh, consumation where we got rid of this excess and were only consuming for actual needs like you were thirsty, you drank water and so on. We cannot return to that. The excess is with us forever. So let's have a drink of Coke. It's getting warm. No longer the real Coke, and that's the problem. You know, this passage from sublime to excremental dimension. When it's cold, properly served, it has a certain attraction, all of a sudden this can change into 
cheap. It's the elementary dialectics of commodities. We are not talking about objective, factual properties of a commodity. We are talking only here about that elusive surplus. Kinder Surprise Egg, a quite astonishing commodity. The surprise of the Kinder Surprise Egg is that this excessive object, the cause of your desire, is here materialized in the guise of an object, a plastic toy which fills in the inner void of the chocolate egg. The whole delicate balance is between these two dimensions. What you bought, the chocolate egg, and the surplus, probably made in some Chinese gulag or whatever, the surplus that you get for free. I don't think that the chocolate frame is here just to send you on a deeper voyage towards the inner treasure, the, what Plato calls the agalma, which makes you a worthy person which makes a commodity the desirable commodity, I think it's the other way around. We should aim at the higher goal, the gold in the middle of an object, precisely in order to be able to enjoy the surface. This is what is the anti-metaphysical lesson which is difficult to accept. That was fun. Do you want to explain? I love that man. I'm probably made in some Chinese gulag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. Uh. Yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of self-evident here. What you have is, is the overcoat that he desires is not simply to keep him warm anymore right yeah but but what it privileges him to socially right he wants to win the respect of his co-workers of his mm -hmm. superiors right but it has to be nice it has to be uh unique it has to be a uh, fancy expensive as expensive as he can afford yeah but in the end when he doesn't have it I think that's what Zizek is referring to as, as the anti-metaphysical, is that he realizes that what matters is its objectivity, mm -hmm. right? Or one realizes that what matters is its objectivity, not that it was seen by the coworkers. In fact, that's what hurt him. Do you get what I mean? Because that's why it was stolen from him. Yeah. He attempted that he fetishized and attempted to use it uh, to buy uh, social status. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, it makes sense. Yeah. It's, there is like the sort of the marriage between between nihilism, right? Specifically, like the sort of Schopenhauerian Buddhist nihilism and Marxism. That is uh, in its. Uh, systemic critique of capitalism yeah and it's something that the anal uh sort of english analytics has a hard time marrying together but it's something that came quite naturally to the russians as we see in gogol dostoevsky and other great existentialist writers mm -hmm. is that it is at once an understanding of sort of um the human situation, right? The universal human situation, that of abandonment, that of uh, never ending desire, right? Uh, but at the same time, it is, it is sort of reinforced or negated in certain ways through the systems, the concrete systems that exist, right? That we're surrounded with. Yeah. Uh, or at least it's 
it's uh, sort of its clarity to us, the sobriety that one has in realizing the human situation um, is either available or obscure to us, depending on the concrete situation, uh, concrete constructs mm. we push up against. Yeah. 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 And I think that's important because mm. I think typically people think, especially in the West, that the sort of nihilism is antithetical to say, Marxism, progressivism, uh, or anything that gives itself to a political will, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't think it is. Hmm. And we see your why. Yeah. No, that's yeah. a good point. That's a good point. Hmm. Because to reach the objectivity of things, we have to strip away the sort of subjective, the metaphysical. And that can only be done through critique. Yeah and revolution and revolution proper revolution proper revolution yeah what's proper revolution i mean one that understands the difficulty of history and development unlike say